Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and today we're going to be looking at a brand new all-in-one liquid cooler from MSI, the MAG Core Liquid i360. And we have the white version here today, it also comes in black, and this is obviously the 360mm model, there is also a smaller and cheaper 240 millimeter model out as well. So the uh, i360 sporting a brand new design, uh, very, very easy to install because all the fans are pre-attached to the radiator, which I absolutely love. And everything inside has kind of had a, a rework and there's a very easy to use accessory set as well. So ease of use is definitely at the forefront of this cooler's design and feature set. So in terms of pricing, we are looking at $140 and £130 pounds in the UK for either the white or the black version of the 360mm radiator. Just looking at my price list and we've got a price of £110 pounds or $110 for either the black or the white version of the 240mm uh, i240. So Look, obviously looking at the larger cooler today, we're going to be doing some thermal testing and unboxing and seeing what you actually get in the box as well and uh, just how easy this thing is to install. And also in another video out today, we're going to be looking at how to install a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, namely this one here, uh, just with a bit, bit more in-depth uh, guide and tips on how to install it into your PC, making sure that your PC is compatible with it, etc, etc. And also how to set up this specific cooler for cooling optimally as well. So thermal testing, check out the other video, and then we're going to come out to uh, some conclusions at the end to see if it is worth the cash. So that's it from the intro, and I'd like to thank MSI for sending over the i360 here that we've got in today, and uh, don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. Love hearing what you guys uh, think of my videos and also the products that we're looking, including the i360 that we've got here. Just helps punch me through the algorithm and gets me noticed as well. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support, and also turn on those notifications so you are notified when I upload a new video, which you can do by tapping on the bell icon when you subscribe. So let's check out the MAG Core Liquid i360. Okay, so here we are with the MSI Core Liquid i360 white, and we're going to have a quick look inside the box to see what we got. And uh, if you want to see how to install this particular cooler or any other 360 millimeter liquid cooler uh, or AIO liquid cooler, then you can see another video that's out today on the channel as well. So you can also click on the link above to go straight to that video or have a look in the description down below. So I've got a whole load of interesting links down in the description as well. So let's uh, lift up the box and uh, see what we've got. So this is literally the first time I've been opening this. So um, you're doing this the same time with me today. And uh, here we can see a very, very neatly packed installation kit. So we actually saw this at Computex, uh, very, very similar uh, arrangement here that we saw at Computex. So we've got everything kind of neatly packaged away. Uh, so no loose bags or anything like that. I, it's a really, really nice touch from MSI. Just makes the building experience a little more pleasant and a little easier to deal with. So uh, if we just uh, pop this open, we can see that everything is labeled and we know exactly what bits we need to go to for our particular setup. So we are gonna be building an AMD system today, but obviously we've got all the components here listed out for in, uh, Intel as well. So that's what I really like about this set is that it makes it really easy for the beginner to follow and install their liquid cooler. So uh, here we can see we've got the Intel bracket uh, mentioned down here, and uh, presumably we're gonna be using the stock AMD backplate on our socket AM5 system. So we've got the AMD standoffs there, we've got the Intel standoffs for this backplate here, and we have some thumb screws and those kind of things. But it looks like you can also use the uh, AMD buckle mechanism down here as well, which will just secure to the standard AMD uh, socket clips. And uh, then we've obviously got some thermal paste up there as well, which probably means that there is no thermal paste as standard and I would be right in assuming that so I prefer it like this I have to say I don't like it when manufacturers pre-apply the thermal paste to the base of the water block or pump section because it's so easy to damage and if you damage it or kind of scrape it away by accident which is really easy to do you then have to go and buy some more because you need all of that thermal paste to be sat between the pump section here, the base plate that we've got here, the copper base plate and your CPU. It needs to be sat in between them to maintain a good thermal transfer. So let's get the uh, the radiator out and we can just uh, unbox things here before we have a look at all the other components. 
get rid of the box over there. So a whole bunch of plastic to deal with here. Um, but that's there to kind of to keep everything nice and shiny and uh, prevent any kind of damage to it and uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, one thing the eagle eyed out there will already have noticed is that out of the box, this thing comes with the fans pre-installed, which I absolutely love because uh, one option out there is to go with uh, fan frames. So a fan frame is literally just like all of this kind of bunched together. So you just have four screws to deal with, one in each corner and a couple of, uh, couple of cables to deal with as well. But the next best option to that and probably a much cheaper option as well is to just use three fans, but that means you have not four screws, but 12 screws and a whole bunch of cables to deal with. So pre-installing everything like this, and obviously we've got this gorgeous white radiator and fans on the i360 as well, looks fantastic and we haven't even started, uh, powered it up yet. Uh, with all these fans pre-installed, it just saves so much time when you're building the PC. And to be honest, installing the fans to a radiator and then uh, mounting this in your in your PC case is one of the trickiest and most just the most laborious task really I just hate installing fans to radiators so um, it's very very simple to do out of the box this one so absolutely love it well done MSI so another thing I love about this cooler is that MSI has also uh, pre-configured all your cables so they are all tied away down the side here and then the cables themselves are just kind of attached by cable ties at the moment, but they are obviously, you're not gonna run it like this, so I'm just gonna manually, manually remove them so we can get a better look at what we're actually dealing with here. And um, yeah, there we go, that's a better view. So we can see that MSI has kind of tidied all those cables together, so we've just got a single RGB cable here three pin RGB that will connect to your motherboard or your, fan con uh, your lighting controller, and you have a single PWM uh, four pin fan connector and uh, those two just can connect to as I mentioned your uh, RGB lighting controller or fan controller or straight to your motherboard so single cable for all of those things which is really really awesome uh, so fans pre-installed cable pre-tided and we just have one um, cable each for the RGB lighting and the fan header so uh, the pump is powered separately. I guess maybe I might have liked to have seen um, MSI kind of do the similar setup where the cables kind of run along inside the tubes and they go down to the pump and then you just have a single cable for everything. We do have separate cables for the pump so there's a, a bit of cable tidying to do here but just a single cable that runs off the pump like so and uh, here again you get a uh, power connector for the pump so um, if you want to tune it down in terms of noise, you can do that. And we'll investigate that a little bit later on to see if it's worth your while. Normally these things are pretty quiet these days, but some of them can be a bit whiny. I uh, don't know what this one's going to be like yet. So that's again, something that we're going to be looking at later. And uh, we also have a single RGB connector. Now this one actually has a daisy chain adapter here. So what that means is that you connect this bit to your motherboard. And then this bit is like a secondary connector. So you can actually just remove the little cap here. You've got the little pins in here. So what you could do if you wanted to is connect the RGB cable from the fan section or the uh, the radiator section on to your fan like that. So that means that you've just got one cable to connect to your um, motherboard for the RGB lighting. So that's a pretty neat feature. So something else I'm just gonna fish around in the box next to me uh, that I know this cooler includes is this thing here. So I'm gonna put that down for a second and just tilt the cooler on its side because as we saw earlier, MSI has pre-tidied all these cables along the side of the cooler like this. So that's all very well, but obviously you don't want all of this kind of on view inside your PC and it depends where you install it in your case and which orientation your, uh, your PC is and the cooler is uh, as a result as to whether these things are gonna be uh, visible and obviously you don't really want to be removing the fans because they've already been installed out of the box so MSI has thought about that too it doesn't want you to remove the fans because it's gone through the effort of pre-installing them so it has included this which is a simple clip that hooks up here like this onto the side of the radiator and just clips into place like that hiding all those cables so I absolutely love this design now it does make the radiator a little bit wider hopefully i can show that to you 
There is a bit of a lip, it's maybe around eight millimeters or so, uh, probably like quarter of an inch or something. Um, not, not too familiar with inches, but definitely about eight millimeters. It's definitely less than a centimeter. So just be aware of that. So if you are very, very tight on your radiator width limits in your case, whether it's in the roof or the front of your case, just be aware that there is a bit of added width on there and to check the specifications, etc., to see what width you're gonna be dealing with. So that is pretty much it from the radiator section. We're just gonna have a quick look at the pump here because uh, we've got the, uh, the new sort of multi-adapter mount here. So this is just a single piece mounting mechanism that goes around the pump. And uh, so you don't need to remove it for any of the options that we're gonna be looking at here. So the AMD um, mounting clips that, that connect to the standard socket mounting clips, if you wanna use those, they are connect to those ones and those ones there. Then if you flip it around, you've got the socket AM4 mounting mechanism, AM4 and AM5 on these sides, and then you've got the Intel sockets out on the, uh, the, like the diagonal points over here and over here as well. So, and obviously, as usual, don't forget to remove the protective thing on there. Um, I'm just gonna leave that on for now because I don't wanna ruin the nice copper base plate for all my B-roll that I'm gonna do in a minute, so. Pretty sure that's it from the box. I'm just gonna have a, uh, a double check over here. I don't think there's anything else that's included. So it is pretty amazing when you look at some of the coolers that we have seen in the past. Um, this is it. You have the cooler, fans, screws, radiator, um, radiator all connected up over there. No extra cables to deal with because everything's been daisy chained and or um, connected down the side of the radiator like this. And everything you have is in this neat little box here. So this is one of, if not the cleanest AIO boxes and accessory packs and installations I think I'm ever gonna see. So well done to MSI for having a very, very neat product here. Starting off with our test system now then, and we have a Core i7-14700K running at stock speed, and uh, we then have all the coolers strapped to it at their full fan speeds and pump speeds, and then we have the readings in terms of temperature, which is the average temperature across all of the P cores on the Core i7-14700K. Uh, we also have the noise results in the graph, so you can see where the each cooler sits in terms of noise and the top graph is filtered by cooling so the best performing cooler sits at the top of the graph there and the bottom graph is filtered by noise levels so the noise levels aren't comparable with what the manufacturer states or anything like that it's literally just my own test gear that i've got here but they are comparable between coolers in my lab basically so the results that you see here are comparable in terms of what cooler is louder than another and um, generally speaking the human ear perceives a, uh, a 10 decibel increase as a doubling of the noise levels so when you've got just one or two de decibels between each cooler it's noticeable but it's not that large a difference in the noise levels so anyway let's carry on with the analysis and we've got the top graph which is filtered by cooling and we have the MSI MAG Core Liquid i360 sitting at the top of the graph it actually managed to beat the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360 by three degrees, which is a, uh, a great result. And um, should be worth noting though, that the Arctic cooler was a little bit quieter. Its fans seemed to spin a little bit slower and it produced a little bit less noise. So both uh, coolers had a pump that was pretty much similar noise levels. Um, no real whines to it um, on either the MSI or the Arctic liquid freezer. Um, but the MSI did have a bit of an edge when it came to the CPU cooling. So 
If we look at the bottom of the graph, we've got the MSI MAG Core Liquid E240, which is a pretty decent 240 millimeter liquid cooler. Obviously struggling, struggling a little bit to keep up with the other coolers there because it's got a radiator that's much, much smaller and it was quickly becoming warm um, during the, uh, the last few minutes of the stress test, so it's not surprising to see it at the bottom of the graph there, but still just about able to cope with a Core i7-14700K. Now moving to the noise level results, we've just touched on that briefly, the Arctic uh, with the lowest noise level here, so if noise level is really, really important, you might want to consider that, but then you can just turn down the fan speed of the MSI cooler and have uh, similar results probably. So uh, the Arctic cooler obviously having its thicker radiator so it's potentially a little bit more tricky to install in some cases whereas the MSI MAG Core Liquid i360 has a standard height radiator that's less um, that's 30 millimeters or less thickness so it's a little bit easier to house in uh, some cases out there. So uh, and the noise level it was just about noticeable between the two, um, as I mentioned, and the MSI MAG Core Liquid E240 down the bottom of the graph had to spin up its fans quite fast to uh, get this kind of cooling, and it was significantly louder as a result. So what do we make of the MSI MAG Core Liquid i360 then? Well, I think what we've got here is a pretty well-rounded cooler in pretty much every single area. In fact, I'd say it's borderline exceptional out there right now because compared to one of the most popular liquid coolers on the market, the Arctic uh, Freezer 360 ARGB, the MSI actually undercuts it in terms of price by uh, 20 or so dollars, which is great news. The um, Arctic retailing for around 150 bucks on Newegg when I looked at this. It's a similar situation in the, U in the UK as well, but the $130, $140 price of the MSI does seem to undercut the uh, Arctic cooler in most places, unless you find some kind of um, one-time deal or something like that. But that's great news. So price-wise, it's a win for MSI. Also on performance, it's a win for MSI as well. And I honestly didn't expect that. The Arctic does have a thicker radiator, but a lot of these things depend on the pump, the cooling plate, and more importantly, the fan speeds, and the fans just seem to shift a bit more air on the MSI, but then we kind of know why, because they were a little bit louder, not by a huge amount, but they were a bit louder, indicating that they were spinning faster and shifting more airflow. So from all of those points of views, um, things are really, really good for the Core Liquid i3, uh, i360, and but probably the thing that impressed me the most is the package that you get. It's incredibly easy to install. Everything is laid out, and I especially love the accessory box that had everything kind of labeled in there. And thanks to the fact that the fans are pre-installed and all the cables have been kind of tidied away and amalgamated by daisy chaining, it just means that you have a very, very easy cooler to work with, which at the end of the day is what makes the PC building experience a little bit more pleasant. And from my point of view, because I install these things a lot, it's a huge boon really to have those fans pre-installed and you just don't have to worry about them. So obviously there are a few, a few caveats with that. If you want to install the, radi the radiator in the front of your case and have fans drawing air through, you will have to shift the uh, or remove the screws and uh, work out, uh, you know, fit that radiator to your case and then pass the, screw the screws back through. But if you're mounting the radiator in the roof like we have here, then all you have to do is install the cooler, which takes literally five minutes, and then secure the radiator from the roof. Super, super easy. So I love the attention to detail here. I love the price. I love the cooling. I think it looks great as well. So if you are looking for an all-in-one liquid cooler, a large one, a 360 millimeter model for less than 140 bucks, I can't really think of many other places I will want to go right now, right now other than the MSI Core Liquid i360. So thanks a lot for MSI for uh, sending the cooler over. And don't forget, if you want to check out how to actually install this cooler in some detail or any 360 millimeter liquid cooler, you can see my other video that's out later on today to see how to do that. And I recommend that video for anyone that's actually buying this cooler or anyone that is looking to install a 360 millimeter um, AIO liquid cooler because they are can, they can be a little bit tricky to install because of the size of the radiator, etc, etc. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Liking and commenting on this video just helps punch me through the algorithm, gets me noticed and helps keep me running this channel. And speaking of keeping me running this channel, don't forget to uh, subscribe to this video as well and turn on those notifications. So hopefully you found it informative today. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below because we've got a load of cool items down there that I've tried and tested here on the channel that you might want to check out, including all the hardware that we looked at today. And if you found this video informative, you can always buy me a coffee in the link down below as well. 
well. So thanks again for watching and I'll be back very, very soon.